Well, welcome back to WKRG News 5 at 5. September is National Sickle Cell Awareness Month, and according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, sickle cell disease affects roughly 100,000 Americans. Dr. Felicia Wilson is a pediatric hematologist and oncologist at USA Health. She joins us now live to discuss sickle cell treatments and how they have advanced. Doctor, thanks for being with us tonight. And maybe first you can just tell us how sickle cell is detected and typically how you treat it. All right, well, in Alabama since 1987, we've been doing newborn screening for sickle cell. So early diagnosis helps us to start early treatment and prevention, and also to teach our parents what to look for at home, when to come to the doctor and when to come to the hospital. Okay, so tell us, doctor, what are some of the advances in treating sickle cell disease? Well, now we have four what we call disease modifying treatments that can actually treat the sickling rather than prevent some of the complications. Uh, like, for instance, with newborn screening, we start penicillin early to prevent infections. But disease modifying therapy gets to the sickle cell itself. So while that doesn't sound like a lot, that's more than we've ever had. There are also different types of stem cell transplants, what we call bone marrow transplant, umbilical cord transplant, or really transplanting the same thing. And that's the stem cell that can make normal new red cells. So the exciting thing though, is that gene therapy trials have been underway and show promise of cure where each person can serve as a donor for themselves. So that's the excitement. There are now two you trials that have gone before changes. the FDA. All right, doctor, and again, uh, if you can tell us who's eligible to receive the sickle cell treatment. So every patient is eligible for disease modifying therapy, and we think everybody should uh, find out about those treatments to get them started as soon as possible. For bone marrow transplant, because of the toxicity of the transplant, uh, individuals who have recurrent pain, uh, acute chest syndrome or have had a stroke or transient ischemic attacks are actually candidates for transplant. So it's not a universal cure yet. And then gene therapy is still in clinical trials, but the two companies have gone before the FDA. So as you know, with new treatments, when they become available, they will be very expensive. So they will probably be reserved for certain sets of patients. Certainly some promising treatments on the horizon. Dr. Felicia Wilson, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you.